Welcome to my first short story called Sight Beyond Blades. Enjoy my imagined short story of what would happen if Mace Windu survived. Sight Beyond Blades. Mace Windu had always been known for his unwavering dedication to the Jedi Order, his fierce loyalty, and his unparalleled skill with a lightsaber. He had fought in countless battles, faced down numerous enemies, and even survived the Clone Wars. But nothing could have prepared him for the challenge that lay ahead. As he stood on the balcony of the Chancellor's office, Mace Windu knew that he was in for the fight of his life. He had come to confront Darth Sidious, the Dark Lord of the Sith, and he was determined to put an end to the Sith once and for all. Mace Windu's heart raced as he raised his lightsaber and prepared to face off against his opponent. He knew that this was a fight that he could not afford to lose. The fate of the galaxy was at stake. The two warriors clashed, their lightsabers flashing in the darkness as they battled for supremacy. The fight was intense, with both combatants giving everything they had. But despite his best efforts, Mace Windu found himself being pushed back by the sheer power of Darth Sidious. Mace manages to deflect the lightning back at Palpatine, disfiguring his face and leaving him vulnerable. He then moves to strike Palpatine down with his lightsaber, but Anakin intervenes, pleading with Mace Windu not to kill the Chancellor. Anakin argues that Palpatine is too valuable to lose and that he needs him. Mace Windu hesitates for a moment, but ultimately decides that Palpatine is too dangerous to be left alive. As he raises his lightsaber to deliver the final blow, Anakin cuts off his hand, causing him to lose his grip on his lightsaber and leaving him defenseless. As Palpatine rises to his feet, he unleashes a final blast of force lightning, throwing Mace Windu out of the window of the Chancellor's office and sending him hurtling to his death. It was in that moment of hesitation that everything changed. He hurtled through the air towards the bustling city below. His body twisted and turned in the wind as he desperately tried to regain control of his fall. As he plummeted towards the ground, Mace Windu called upon the force to cushion his impact and prevent his certain death. He felt his body slow down as he neared a nearby building, and with a tremendous effort, he used the force to land safely on the rooftop. Despite his incredible skill, and mastery of the force, Mace Windu was badly injured from his fall. He lay on the rooftop for a few moments, gasping for air and taking stock of his injuries. He felt his ribs creak as he attempted to move, and he knew that he needed medical attention if he was to survive. Summoning all of his strength, Mace Windu staggered to his feet and stumbled towards the nearest exit. He knew that the Empire would be searching for him, and he had to remain hidden if he was to stand any chance of survival. As he made his way through the busy streets of Coruscant, Mace Windu could feel the pain from his injuries intensifying with each step. He used the Force to conceal his presence from anyone who might be looking for him, but he knew that he couldn't remain hidden forever. After several hours of wandering through the city, Mace Windu finally found a small medical facility run by a group of sympathetic healers. Despite their reservations about treating a Jedi, they recognized Mace Windu's injuries as serious and agreed to help him. Over the next few weeks, Mace Windu remained hidden in the medical facility, recovering from his injuries and planning his next move. He knew that the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and he was determined to do whatever it took to ensure that the Jedi Order survived the rise of the Empire. After several weeks of hiding in a medical facility on Coruscant, Mace Windu knew that he could no longer stay on the planet. He had heard rumors of Jedi being hunted down and killed by the Empire, and he knew that he was not safe in the heart of the galaxy. Determined to stay alive and continue the fight against the Empire, Mace Windu began planning his escape. He knew that he needed to leave Coruscant as soon as possible and find a safe haven where he could regroup and plan his next move. Using his knowledge of the galaxy and his connections with other Jedi who had managed to evade the Empire, Mace Windu identified a remote planet on the Outer Rim that he believed would be a safe refuge. The planet was sparsely populated and largely ignored by the rest of the galaxy, making it an ideal place to hide. With a plan in mind, Mace Windu set out to secure transportation off of Coruscant. He used his connections within the criminal underworld to find a smuggler who was willing to take him to the remote planet. After negotiating a steep price, Mace Windu boarded the smuggler's ship and set off towards his new sanctuary. 
The journey was long and treacherous, with Mace Windu forced to endure the cramped and uncomfortable conditions of the smuggler's ship for several weeks. However, he remained focused on his goal, and used the time to meditate and prepare for the challenges that lay ahead. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the ship emerged from hyperspace and entered the atmosphere of the remote planet. Mace Windu could sense the peaceful aura of the planet and knew that he had made the right choice in seeking refuge there. As the ship touched down on the planet's surface, Mace Windu disembarked and set out to explore his new surroundings. The planet was a stark contrast to the bustling cities of Coruscant, with vast stretches of wilderness and rugged terrain stretching out as far as the eye could see. As Mace Windu explored the remote planet where he had sought refuge, he stumbled upon a small village nestled in a clearing deep in the wilderness. The village was unlike any he had seen before, with simple wooden houses and a small market square bustling with activity. As he wandered through the market square, Mace Windu noticed a young blind girl sitting alone by the side of the road. She seemed lost and scared, and Mace could sense her fear and confusion even without the use of his eyes. Mace Windu approached the girl and asked if she needed any help. At first, she was hesitant and scared, but as he spoke to her, she began to open up. Her name was Lyra. She told him that she had been separated from her family since birth and had been wandering alone in the wilderness for years as an orphan with no idea where to go or what to do. She lived mostly of scraps she could find. Mace Windu felt a connection with the girl and decided to help her. He took her under his wing and brought her to a nearby inn while it started to rain. As they sat in the inn, Mace Windu noticed something strange about Lyra. Despite her blindness, she seemed to possess an incredible sense of awareness and intuition. She could sense things that Mace Windu could not, and he began to suspect that she might be strong in the Force. He decided to test her abilities by asking her to reach out with the Force and sense the world around her. To his amazement, the she immediately responded, reaching out with a newfound sense of confidence and focus. She described the colors and shapes of the world around her, using the force to sense the movements and emotions of those around her. Mace Windu was stunned by the girl's abilities and realized that she was a rare and special talent. He knew that he had to help her harness her powers and develop her connection to the Force. Mace Windu's strength in the Force had been severely diminished after the blast from Palpatine. He felt weak and vulnerable, unable to tap into the full extent of his powers. But he knew he had a responsibility to train and guide the young girl named Lyra, who possessed an incredible ability to sense and use the Force despite her blindness. As Mace trained Lyra, he was amazed by her natural affinity for the Force. Despite her lack of sight, she could sense the movements and emotions of those around her with incredible accuracy. Mace watched in awe as she used the Force to guide her movements and detect danger, moving with an almost supernatural grace and precision. Together, Mace and Lyra delved into the teachings of the Jedi Code, with Mace explaining the importance of self-discipline and the power of the Force. Despite the challenges she faced, Lyra was a dedicated and disciplined student working tirelessly to master the ways of the Force. Lyra's incredible reflexes were a constant source of wonder and amazement for Mace. Her unique perspective and reliance on the Force allowed her to sense things that others could not, and he knew that she had the potential to become a great Jedi. Together, they faced many challenges, including dangerous wildlife and harsh weather conditions. But Lyra's abilities allowed them to overcome every obstacle, and Mace watched with pride as she grew stronger and more confident with each passing day. Despite his weakened state, Mace continued to guide Lyra on her journey, preparing her for the many challenges that lay ahead. He knew that she had a great destiny ahead of her, and he was determined to help her reach her full potential as a Jedi Knight. Mace and Lyra had been training together for several months, and they had developed a strong bond as teacher and student. One day, as they rested between training sessions, Mace expressed his concerns about the strict adherence to the Jedi Code. Lyra, the Jedi Code is a strict set of rules that must be followed, Mace said with a stern expression on his face. It is essential that we adhere to its teachings as they have been handed down from generation to generation. 
Lyra listened to her master's words, sensing his strict adherence to the code. She respected Mace's knowledge and wisdom, but couldn't help but feel that the code could be more flexible to allow for new discoveries in the Force. I understand the importance of the Jedi Code, Master, Lyra said respectfully, but perhaps we could interpret its teachings in a more flexible manner. The Force is constantly changing, and we must be willing to adapt with it. Mace shook his head, not convinced. The Jedi Code has served us well for generations, Lyra. It is not up to us to change it to fit our own interpretations. Lyra took a deep breath, sensing her master's stubbornness. But what if the code is holding us back from reaching our full potential? What if there are other ways to use the Force that we have yet to discover? Mace paused, considering Lyra's words. He had always believed that the strict adherence to the code was what kept the Jedi Order strong and focused. However, he couldn't ignore the passion and determination in Lyra's voice. I see your point, Lyra, Mace said slowly. Perhaps there is room for interpretation in the Jedi Code, but we must be careful not to stray too far from its teachings or we risk falling to the dark side. As time passed, Mace felt his strength dwindling. He knew that his injuries from the battle with Palpatine had weakened him, but he refused to let it stop him from training Lyra. Despite his failing health, Mace continued to push himself and Lyra to their limits. He could sense her growing strength in the Force, and he knew that she had the potential to become a great Jedi. As the days went by, Mace began to realize that his time was running out. He had given everything he had to the training of Lyra, and he knew that it was time for him to pass on the mantle of the Jedi to her. One day, as they sat together in the small village where they had been living, Mace looked into Lyra's blind eyes and saw the future of the Jedi Order. Lyra, Mace said softly, you are ready to take on the mantle of the Jedi. I have taught you everything I know, and I know that you will make a great Jedi. Lyra looked up at her master, sensing the sadness in his voice. She knew that he was growing weaker by the day, but she couldn't bear the thought of losing him. Master, Lyra said, her voice cracking with emotion, you cannot leave me. I still have so much to learn from you. Mace smiled, feeling the warmth of her emotions in the Force. Lyra, you do not need me anymore. You have grown stronger than I ever could have imagined. It is time for me to leave this world and join the Force. Lyra's tears flowed freely as Mace closed his eyes and began to meditate. She could sense the life slowly fading from his body, but she also felt his spirit soaring towards the heavens. In a burst of light, Mace's body disappeared, leaving behind only his lightsaber and the legacy of the Jedi Order. Lyra was left alone with her grief, but also with the knowledge that she was now the keeper of the Jedi legacy. With a heavy heart, Lyra picked up Mace's lightsaber and held it close to her chest. She knew that she had much work to do, but she also knew that she was ready to take on the challenges ahead. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my first story. Let me know what you thought of it down below.